in this video we're going to go over projectile motion so basically there's a video that has talked about the basic concepts and the formulas that you need as you get to talk about projectile motion so in this video we're going to focus more on the practice questions okay so question one find the range x of a gun which fires the shear with a muzzle velocity v at an angle of elevation theta okay so in this question the first part of the question a eh, what if they told us so we've been told to find the range so basically when you have um, a projectile so when you're asked to find the range we're asking for the horizontal distance right so an example of this projectile a to b the distance the the horizontal distance covered by the projectile is what we refer to as the range okay so now we are trying to find the range in this case okay so i'll leave that so the range is given as a product of the velocity in the x multiplied by time so why do we just multiply so what you need to understand is from that uh, lesson that we have in the, the other video we say that velocity in the x direction is constant throughout motion meaning that the velocity that it is starting with initially that it will be the same velocity at any point in the x direction what only gets to change is the velocity in the y direction due to the gravity which is the acceleration that gets to affect it okay so we are saying the formula that we're working with is range is given as a product of the um, basically velocity in the x <coughs> multiplied by what by the time so now velocity in the x is actually given as v cosine of theta multiplied by t because if you look at something starting like that with a certain velocity at a certain angle of theta that is your v so from vectors you're able to come up with the x component which will give you that value v cos theta okay so now that we have the formula for our range, let's look at the given data in the question. So if you look at the question, we've been taught velocity v and d theta. So all we've been given is velocity and theta. So we've not been given the time. And this time that we're talking about that is used to find the range is the total time of flight. Okay. So taking an assumption to say our projectile is this form, which is symmetrical. We know that the time of flight of the first of all the time taken to reach a maximum point is given as v sine theta divided by what divided by g so this is symmetrical so that being the time required that's being the time taken to reach what maximum point the time taken to move from a to b is going to be doubled okay so what is the formula that we work with when we're finding the total time of the time of flight so we know what our t is equal to now so we know that our t is 2v sine theta divided by what divided by g so we can substitute in that equation at that point where we have the t we'll put that so we have 2v sine theta divided by what g okay so at that point what are we going to have so now our range is therefore going to be so we have seen that v is everywhere so we we'll decide to start with a 2 so we have 2 v squared sine theta being multiplied by cosine theta so we've multiplied the numerator so not forgetting that we also have what we have g down there okay so we can still simplify that okay so if you look at what we have there we can like it in a different form. Let's try to do that. Alright, so we are saying our range is I can start with v squared and say 2 sine theta cos theta over what? Over g. So if you look at what we have, this part, have you seen it anywhere? Have you done your trigonometry already? Okay, so what is that? A double angle identity. Okay, so it can be easier that way. So from our trigonometry, we know that whenever you are talking about sine 2 theta, it's equivalent to 2 sine theta 
cosine of what? Cosine of theta. Okay. So we can therefore substitute that at that point. And the formula is going to be v squared sine 2 theta divided by what? Divided by g. So that is a simplified form of that formula. Okay. And so therefore, what does that tell us? That tells us to say that whenever they ask you to find the range without being given the time, this is the formula that you're going to be working with. Okay, so that is our solution to the first question. So it was just trying to ask us to find the range when you're not given the time. Okay, so if basically you are still lost with the equations, I would advise you check out our video on projectile motion, the basic introduction. All right, the second part of the question, question B. Find the angle of derivation of a gun which fires a shell with a muzzle velocity of 120 meters per second and hits a target on the same level but 1,300 meters distance. Okay, so what does that question tell us? So the question is telling us to say you have a projectile, okay? So what you have is 120 meters per second then you've also been told that the target is 1,003 meters away. So that is our range. So in this question, we've been given the range. We've also been given the velocity. So we are asked to find the theta. Okay. So basically, in this question, we're not given the time. So we can work with this with the equation that we've come up with in this question. Let's try to do that. And we we'll see what we're going to have. Okay, so I'll, I'll plug in. We know that our range is 1,300. Then the formula is V squared there. So our V is 120 squared sine 2 theta. So we have sine 2 theta over our G, which our G we know is 9.8. So at that point, we can now make our theta to be the subject. So making our theta to be the subject, we cross and multiply. So we have, we basically have 120 squared sine 2 feet being equal to 1,300 multiplied by 9.8. Okay. So we want to remain with sine 2 feet on one side. So we can divide by the 120 squared on both sides. So that would cancel out when we have 120 squared the other side. Okay. So... 1,300 is being multiplied with what? So we are multiplying 1,300 multiplied by the 9.8. Well, so after multiplying, you get to divide by the 120 squared. So 1,300 multiplied by 9.8 divided by 120 squared. So what I'm getting is a 0 0.884. So we have 0 0.884. So going back to our trigonometry, we can find sine inverse for that. So we have two theta being equivalent to sine inverse of that. So what is sine inverse of that? So sine inverse of that, get your calculator. So sine inverse of um, 0 0.884. I basically have the 62 there. So 62 divided by the 2 that is there, we'll find that our theta is actually going to be equivalent to what? 31 degrees. So that is our solution to the first question. Question 2. A baseball is thrown as shown below. How far from the throwing point will the ball attain its original position? So basically what they're asking us to find is the range, x. We've been given the starting or the initial velocity. We've also been given the angle at which a projectile is starting. So now we're trying to find the, the range, where it is going to drop from, or where it's going to attain the position where it is on the other side. Okay. So what can we do? In this case, we've not given time, so we can find the range. So we say the range from the first question is dependent on v squared sine 2 theta over what? over our g so therefore if we plug in what we have we have 100 squared 
sine 2 that is a 30 degrees in this case our angle divided by our gravity which is 9.8 so grab your calculator and plug in the values that we have okay so 100 squared multiplied by sine skista so then what you get divided by 9.8 okay so the range that I'm getting is actually 883.7 meters so that is our range in that question the next question is a different form of a projector where it is coming from a certain height then you have to find the range again so how do you get to approach such a question so in this question it's more kind of like applying the concept of free form motion so first to find the range of course we know that the range is dependent on the product of the velocity in the x multiplied by time so looking at the information that is given in the question you'll see that we've been given actually the velocity in the x okay so do we have the time we don't have the time so we need to find the time so under free form motion we realize that when you look at the second equation which is um, basically s is equal to ut plus uh, half at squared so looking at this equation approaching it from the fact that this is in the y direction our distance will become our height then there is no initial velocity in this case we don't we didn't have any initial velocity in the y direction then we have half our acceleration in the y is gravity and our t squared so let's try to find our t do we have our height our height is a hundred okay so let's try to make out the t the subject in that case so making t the subject we have to multiply by two on both sides and divide by g on both sides so basically what we have is the g there is going to cancel out the two is going to cancel out with the half so we have our t squared being equivalent to 2h of the g so therefore our t is going to be the root of 2h over what over g so that is coming from free form motion so if we can find the time we can plug in in that equation and be able to find what and be able to find the range so therefore in this case our range is going to be given by the product of velocity in the x the time is going to be substituted by the root of what 2h over g so what is the velocity in the x it's 15 meters per second root of what is our height our height is 100 divided by 9.8 okay so what value can you get if you do that so I'll start with the square root part so we have the 15 being multiplied by so 2 multiplied by 100 is 200 divided by 9.8 okay so 2 so we're trying to find the root of 200 divided by 9.8 okay so what we have as our value is we have 1.4 let me do that again so we have the square root of 200 divided by 9.8 okay so basically the solution that I'm having is I'm getting a 4.517 as our time so that multiplied by 15 So what I'm getting is now 67.76. So that is our range in meters. Okay. Question four. A ball is thrown from the top of one building toward a top building 50 meters away. The initial velocity of a ball is 20 meters per second, 40 degrees. How far above or below its original level will it will the ball strike the opposite or? Okay, so whenever you're given a question, it's very important to have a sketch of what you've been taught. Okay, so we have a building initially, and that's where a ball is coming from. Then they're saying there's another building, a taller building, okay, which is 50 meters away. 
Okay, so what does that mean? So what it means is that after you throw something up at a certain angle, it's very possible that it may eat somewhere on top or even get to eat the next door or maybe below. Okay, so now what angle are we looking at? So we're looking at an angle of an angle 40 degrees. Can you show it there? So an angle 40 degrees to the horizontal. Okay. So let's do this. So the launching angle there is 40. So we're not so sure if you do it above or below. Okay. So then, so we've been given the range. We've also been given the the initial velocity. So initial velocity has been given to be 20 meters per second. So how can this help us to find whether it will be below or above? Okay. So it's very important to understand that the formula that we're going to be working with, which is coming from the linear motion, is actually this formula. Okay. So now, in terms of uh, whenever we're dealing with uh, projectile motion, the distance, the displacement becomes the height in terms of a y-axis. Then the initial velocity there is the initial velocity in the y, and the time plus half gt squared. Okay. So it's very important to understand some of the assumptions that are taken when you're looking at that formula. Okay, so in this case, we take an assumption to say, okay, going up, our velocity is going to be negative. Then getting down, our velocity will be what? Will be positive. So that gets to affect the gravity, the, the acceleration as well. Okay, so in this case, if you look at the initial velocity going up, so initial velocity is going up, it's going to be a, a negative initial velocity there. Then, since it's going to be getting down, we look at our gravity to be what? To be positive. Okay, so now let's try to see the calculations that are necessary for us to find the height. So this formula will help you to find the height at any given time in the motion of um, the ball. So if you look at the initial velocity in the y, we're able to find that. The gravity is already given. So now, time. How do you get to find the time? So we've been told the distance from the other building to the next building. So that is the range. And we say that the range is given as a product of what? Velocity in the x multiplied by time. So we say it, velocity in the x is constant throughout a projectile motion. Okay. So what is our range? Our range is 50. Velocity in the x. So if you have something being launched, where you're trying to find the velocity in the x, you go back to your, vector, to your vectors, it is going to be the velocity that we have, 20, cosine the angle, 40, multiply by time. So if you get your calculator there and divide the 20 cos 40 into 50, 50 divided by 20 cos 40. Okay, so what I'm getting is um, 3.26 seconds. So we have our time now. So that's now a matter of getting to plug into the formula that we have with us. Okay. So we'll go back to the formula of our height. So our height is going to be given by what is our initial velocity in the y? Initial velocity in the y, and we are saying, considering the velocity going up, is negative. So it's going to be what? So in the y, it's 20. So it's going to be minus 20 sine 40 multiplied by the time which is 3.26 plus 1 over 2. Our gravity is going to be considered to be positive since it's going to be dropping down. Then our time, 3.26 squared. Okay, so you can get your calculator there and plug in the values. We see what we're going to have as our, as our height. Negative 20 sine 40 which is a negative 12.8 multiplied by 3.26. Then the other side we have 1 over 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 3.26 squared. Okay. So what value am I getting there? So I'm getting 52.075 
Okay. So negative 12.8. Negative 12.8 multiplied by 3.26 plus 52. Okay, so what I'm getting is 10.3 meters. So considering the fact that uh, we considered our hub to be negative, so meaning that down is going to be positive. So this was down. Okay, so that's just for the sake of the calculations. But basically, in the real sense, you can you're supposed to first of all find the range the maximum range that that projector can cover so that you're able to make uh, a conclusion if it's if this answer is true or not so if you look at this question you have a projector there so this projector what have we been given we've been given the 20 meters per second we've also been given the angle to be 40 degrees are we able to find the range that the maximum range that is able to cover so that we predict whether it's going to fall before even eating the, the next building or what. So how do you get to calculate the range? So we say the range without being given the time is given by v squared sine 2 theta divided by what? Divided by our g. Okay. So what is our velocity? Our velocity in this case is 20. So if you can plug in there, we have what? We have 20 squared sine 2 multiplied by 40 divided by what? divided by 9.8 so get your calculator 20 squared multiplied by sine 2 multiplied by 40 divided by 9.8 okay so what I'm getting as the range is 40.2 meters so what is 40.2 meters? Is it so this is the maximum range that that projector can cover with that initial velocity of what? Of 20 meters per second. So meaning that it was going to drop even before what? Eating the next what? Even the next uh, building. So meaning that it wasn't possible. Okay, so it was not possible for the projector to eat the next wall there. So that's the way you need to be approaching these questions. Okay. Next question. A ball is launched with an initial velocity of 4.47 meters per second at an angle of 66 degrees above the horizontal. What is the maximum height attained? Okay, so what do we have here? We've been given the initial velocity of the projector, so we can sketch it. So we have something like that. It's making an angle of 66 degrees with the horizontal. Then we know that this, the initial velocity was what? 4.47 meters per second so that's what we have as our information the next question is to say calculate the maximum height attained so some of the, the formula that you can use is this one okay v squared sine squared theta divided by 2g okay so that's the formula that can help you out but in case you don't know that formula go to linear motion and look at this equation v squared is equal to u squared plus 2gh. Okay. So, you know that at the maximum height there, the final velocity is going to be a zero. Okay. So, the initial velocity there is what we are saying, is what we are saying u squared. Okay. So, what was the initial velocity in the y? Because, <coughs> what was the initial velocity there? Because that's what you are trying to look at. What is What was the initial velocity in the y? Because we are trying to study the, the y direction. Okay. Because in the x, of course, just as we are aware, it never gets to stop. It moves with a constant velocity throughout the motion. So, therefore, if we are to be interested in the y direction, the initial velocity it is going to be what? It's going to be given as. So, it is going to be v sine what? Sine theta. So, it will be squared. Plus, what is our. Gravity, a gravity of course we know. So when you're going up, is the gravity negative or positive? Okay, so we'll take an assumption to say it's a, since we've said that our velocity going up is positive. So in fact, so whatever you consider for for this other one, it's supposed to apply to the gravity as well. 
So since we've taken this one to be positive, so our gravity going up, in fact, let's consider it to be negative. So that we put a negative for the gravity as well, minus 2gh, like that. Okay, so when this one goes the other side, you're going to see that that's where that formula is coming from, and it comes out. Okay, so now let's try to plug in the values that we've been given there. So our height is going to be, our velocity is 4.47 squared sine, what is the angle? 66 squared. Divided by what? Divided by 2g, which is uh, the, the gravity there. So we have 4.47 squared multiplied by sine 66 squared divided by 2 multiplied by 9.8. Okay. So our height, what we are looking at in this case, is just going to be 0 0.85 meters. So why is it 0 0.85 meters? It's small. Why is it small? It is small because of uh, the angle that we are looking at. So the next question says, how long did it take the boat to return to the launching point? Okay. So that's like where it is starting from now goes up the maximum height then it reaches again so like how long is it going to take to complete that and so that's what we look at as a time of flight okay so if you go to this equation under linear motion it's going to help you out so what are we studying so usually for the calculations we get to use the y-axis because in the x-axis things are just constant so we have our v being equal to u plus at so considering the y-axis our final velocity at the maximum point is going to be zero. Our initial velocity is going to be what? V sine theta. Our gravity will be g there. Okay. So, well, how is it going to come out then? So, our goal is to make t the subject there. So, this is going to be minus V sine theta. And gravity going up is going to be considered to be negative g t. So if you make g to be the subject, you have v sine theta divided by what? Divided by g. So what is the time taken to reach a maximum height? So that same one can be multiplied since you are looking at this as to be double the maximum height. So the time taken to reach a maximum height is the time taken to reach the same position the other side. So you're just supposed to multiply that formula by 2. So the time of flight is going to be given by 2v sine theta divided by what? Divided by your g. So get the values that we've been given in this case. So our velocity was 4.47 sine 66. So in brackets, divided by what? The gravity, which was 9.8. So if you get your calculator there, 2 multiplied by 4.47 multiplied by sine 66 divided by 9.8. What I'm getting as my time is actually 0 0.83 seconds. Okay, so that's how long it's going to take for it to move from that point A to the point B. Question six. A physics book dropped. Our <laughs> Question six. A physics book strides off a horizontal top with a speed of 120 meters per second. If it strikes the floor with 0 0.35 seconds, find the height of the table. Okay. <laughs> a physics book strides off a horizontal top with a speed of 120 meters per second. If it strikes the floor in 0 0.35 zero seconds, find the height of the table above the floor and also the range. So it's very important to take note of the information that you've been given in the question. So if you look at this question, what data have we been taught? So we've been taught it's a uh, it's on the top, okay, of uh, the table. So it's a uh, sliding horizontally with a speed of 120 meters per second, something like this. 120 meters per second. Okay. So after that, it gets to strike the throw in a period of what? in a period of uh, 0 
0 seconds. So we have the time and we have our initial velocity in the x. So what, what are we taught to find? We are trying to find the height of a table. So in this case we can work with free form motion because this is just like being dropped. It's just being dropped. So initially all what we've been given was the initial velocity in what? In the x direction. There was no initial velocity in the y. Okay. So if you look at the, this formula under linear motion, h is equal to ut plus uh, half x squared. So it can help you out. So I can say our height is therefore going to be equal to half gt squared. You can plug in the values there. What is our gravity? 9.8. What was our time? 0 0.35 squared. So get your calculator there. 0 0.5 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.35 squared. Okay. So what I'm getting as our height is 0 0.60025 meters. Okay. So that's how you get to answer or find the height in a question. Okay. So you can just read it as 0 0.6 meters. Better off because the zeros there are just too many. The next question says the range. So what is the range? The range is the horizontal distance covered. Okay. From the starting point. So this distance there, that is what we're looking at as the range. And we say that the velocity in the x is constant throughout motion of a projector. So you can therefore say that our range is going to be given as the velocity in the x multiplied by the time it takes. So if you get to plug in there, the initial velocity was 120. The time it took was 0 0.350 0 seconds. So what do you get to after plugging in there? So 0 0.350 is being multiplied by the 120. Okay. So what I'm getting as our range is uh, 42. So we have 42 meters as our range in that question. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.